Hi there, and welcome to this update on an eruption that just began at the Kilauea volcano in Hawaii. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me. And this just happened a few, maybe hour or two ago, and so there's not a lot of news, and there's also not a webcam showing right now the eruption in progress. I'm sure that the USGS will get a webcam uh, up and on site as the day progresses. So this is, we have very little information, but we'll just get to what we know. And I wanted to put an update out there as soon as I could to let you know what's taking place. So thanks for joining me. Uh, appreciate you liking and subscribing to the channel and supporting it. Um, so the eruption began uh, early on June 3rd. Today's Monday, June 3rd at 12.40 a.m. Hawaii, Hawaii Standard Time, which would be about 10.40 a.m. UTC. Uh, so we're only within the first few hours of the eruption. And this webcam from up on the slopes of adjacent Mount Aloha shows the glow in the sky that was captured when the eruption uh, began. This is actually, sorry, this is a live webcam view. So this is um, right now about 4 a.m. Hawaii time. And you can see that glow in that area there. We'll come back to some of these images, but let's first get to some of the basic information such as location. And we don't have a, a real fixed location on where the eruption began, but based on the earthquakes we saw over the last 24 hours, it's most likely that this Fisher eruption, if it is a Fisher eruption, is just on the south flank of Kilauea just outside the Halimaumau crater that's up here at the top. Uh, and so this is the area where we expect that the eruption has occurred. Again, we don't have any specific details on location in terms of like exact GPS coordinates or where this is. We'll get to the earthquake data in a bit as well. Um, so I may update this later today. I'll be doing a live stream um, and a drone flight in Iceland, but I will circle back to cover some of this information that will develop throughout the day with this eruption here in Kilauea. So let's start with some information that we know from the USGS and their most recent um, update. The, the funny thing here is I was, uh, I saw early this morning before I went to my workout class that they had elevated it to orange level and so I was planning on doing an update anyway so the seismicity had warranted that the volcano alert level be raised to um, warning level which is orange uh, or watch level excuse me which is orange um, but then by the time I went to my workout class and got home excuse me it had already erupted so let's go ahead and get right down to this here so this is as of uh, 2 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time again Monday June 3rd and volcano is erupting. A new eruption began at approximately 12.30 a.m. on Monday, June 3rd, likely about a mile south of Kilauea Caldera and north of the Kauai Fault System and Helena Pali Road. So let me give you a little bit of uh, an orientation as to where that is. So here is the Kilauea Caldera. The Halimaumau Crater is down here. And the Helena Pali Road... Let's see if we zoom in enough. There it is. Here it is cutting up over here. So, and then these blue lines are some of the bigger faults in the Kauai fault system. So more or less in this zone, right on the, the south flank of this. It doesn't seem to be in the lower east rift or the upper east rift zone uh, based on the earthquake location. So it's most likely that the eruption was in that area there. Let's continue on with the USGS update. Um, so accordingly, because the eruption began, they raised the warning level alert level from orange to red glow is visible in webcam imagery indicating that lava is currently erupting from fissures the most recent eruption in this region was december 1974 and it lasted only about six hours at this time it's not possible to say how long the eruption will last uh, they're continuing to monitor it for signs of increasing or decreasing activity and if anything changes they'll um, they'll be provide an update uh, and that's kind of it um, and then if you come down further, let's see, we might need to go to the previous uh, update here. They did because of the activity uh, here. So this was the prior update. And let me make that a little bit bigger for you. Um, so this was the update that was issued last evening. Um, so Sunday, about 11 p.m. Hawaii time. And it wasn't erupting at that time, but they had the elevated seismicity, ground deformation, all the classic signs of a possible eruption or at least an intrusion. Um, and they couldn't say for sure if it was going to erupt. It could stay underground as an intrusion. 
and they talk about the total number of earthquakes, 250 earthquakes over the past eight hours, including a magnitude 4.1 and a 4.0. Uh, and then they had 12 that were between three and four, and then they kind of break down the distribution there. But, you know, uh, few big earthquakes and more as you get down in the magnitude scale. Um, most of them were two to three kilometers depth, about one to two miles. And they did end up closing. I'm trying to find it in here. Um, yeah, the park closed uh, one of the parking lots and the Keanakakoe area. So areas in the park that were close to this earthquake swarm were closed. So again, not a lot of information, but let's just look at a couple things here I've got prepared for you. So this is the uh, live webcam look from Mount Aloha. You can see the stars in the sky and this is looking past the Kilauea caldera down onto uh, looking to the southeast I believe and so you're catching a little bit of the glow there from the erupting fissures down on the south flank of Kilauea. Uh, we went through the updates and this is a time lapse so this is that same webcam and this I can't pause this unfortunately but this is yesterday you can see the time here one o'clock in the afternoon now we're going into the evening hours and you'll be able to see and this records just every hour and boom right there there's the eruption uh, just after midnight so we'll let that run through again again this is June 2nd uh, going into the afternoon and into the evening now we're in Sunday night going into early Monday morning and then boom that first big glow there that's the eruption uh, lighting up the sky again from the Mount Aloha Road looking down towards Kilauea. So for now that's the best webcam we have. Um, there are other web there's a lot of webcams on Kilauea but a lot of them along the rim here are looking down into the central portion and I don't know if those webcams are automated enough that they can just swivel around 360 um, I'm guessing not that they're more or less fixed on an area and so they're not able to uh, you know operate those independently so what this is going to mean I'm assuming is they're going to need to go down uh, at some point probably once the sun is up and they can really get a sense of the and characterize the eruption how extensive it is uh, and safely put a webcam in somewhere nearby uh, but of course you know that's that's not their number one priority right now their number one priori priority is not letting this eruption be viewable to the general public they're thinking about uh, safety within the park um, safety to infrastructure and that sort of thing so we'll have to see how this plays out I'm not sure what the timetable would be on when we actually get a webcam on it and so let's just remember uh, while it's a bit frustrating this is a huge volcanic system there are lots of places where Kilauea can and has erupted in the past within its summit uh, caldera and crater system, along the southwest rift zone, along the east rift zone. And while it does have these flank eruptions on occasion, they're kind of the anomaly to some degree. And so that's partly why we don't have webcams fixed in this area, is that this is the least likely, all things being equal, this is a, a low likelihood or low probability region for an eruption. But nonetheless, we're, ha we're experiencing a, a flank eruption. Um, from a, a point or fissure on here and you can see where these 1974 flows were over here. Uh, a couple other things I've got prepared for you. Here's a nice view uh, I found on Facebook that someone had taken and posted on the US. The USGS had posted it. Uh, let's make sure we get the credit here. Um, yeah, courtesy of Rita Morris and Matt Wall with the Keck Observatory. So this is from Mauna Kea, another big volcano on the Big Island looking more or less south or southeast towards Kilauea and showing some of that glow. So I'm assuming these folks were up at the observatory uh, doing some astronomy work or, or observing and they were able to actually capture the glow. You can see some of the telescopes here on the flank of Mauna Kea and of course the, the beautiful sky and, and Milky Way there. So really nice picture there. Um, and then the main thing let's focus on here while we're waiting for actual you know, video of the eruption and some more information from the USGS is let's look at the earthquake data that, that led into this and this may give us a handle on uh, what kind of volcanic system or, and behavior we might be looking at. So all these earthquakes you're seeing here over the past day, uh, if we go back seven days, um, you know, there's very, the only ones that are older than a day are the ones in yellow. So not a lot of earthquakes um, over the past 
or excuse me, yeah, seven days, just not a lot over the past week. Most of what you're seeing there, especially in orange, is within, within the last 24 hours. And you can see here is the upper part of the East Rift Zone. So a few earthquakes over here, and we'd seen some activity here over the past few months in the Upper East Rift Zone. But we've also been watching this South Caldera area and the south flank of the caldera has had a lot of earthquakes, uh, some magmatic intrusions. Uh, some of them, I believe, in the past were a little bit further to the west, such that we did have an intrusion a few months ago. I'd have to check the dates where, we, where magma moved its way up towards the surface but didn't actually uh, culminate in an eruption. And so if we just kind of focus on these earthquakes here, you can see some of the bigger ones. Uh, there's a 3.2. There's one of the fours right there. Uh, we could probably hunt around in here and find uh, other big ones. There's another three. Um, I'm sure we could find the other four in here if we kept looking for it. Um, but the point is that it's it's somewhat scattered. And with my eye, um, there's not a clear trend that would show which direction the fissure is running. Remember that we're kind of in a region where the the structural trend becomes kind of complicated. We have the, the, the Upper East Rift Zone, which more or less runs in this area, Northwest Southeast. Uh, we have the Southwest Rift Zone, which runs Southwest Northeast. But then in here, we have this these connector faults related to the southward movement of the Kilauea flank towards the sea. And you can see some of these Kauai fault systems in here. So we also have this this other trend of structures that go almost east-west or slightly southwest to northeast. So there's sort of three dominant structural trends um, on this side of the volcano. And it's hard to say for sure what what we have going on here. I think the strongest trend would be something, um, you know, north, east, southwest in this orientation. But we'll have to see uh, which way those fissures are or, or, uh, oriented once we get some imagery from above. Uh, that'll be interesting. So um, possible that it's one of these Kauai fault segments. Um, not quite on the Upper East Rift Zone. It's not quite on the Southwest Rift Zone. It's sort of in this interesting area uh, along the flank here. And I guess if we look at the the eruption in 1974, um, we can get in here and actually see some of those fissures that went sort of... Uh, not quite east-west, but you know, southwest, northeast-ish, um, more or less, yeah, part of the Kauai fault system. So these other eruptive vents from 1974 definitely followed <clears throat> the Kauai fault orientation more so than either of the rift zones. And so if we look back at these here, um, that trend to me doesn't look quite as uh, strong that east-west trend but we'll have to see how the how this plays out so so there's some of the earthquakes um, and then I can also show you those earthquakes animated so you can send it, see how quickly those came in so again here's the upper east rift zone southwest rift zone over here the Kilauea caldera um, and of course we've had a persistent uh, lava lake at times in Hale Mau Mau Crater up here on the southwest side of Kilauea Caldera. Of course, this all got dramatically changed in 2018 when we had the eruption in the lower east rift zone and some of the collapse here. So let's go ahead and animate this now and it'll show you those earthquakes coming in. So the earthquakes are the dots and then watch how quickly those come in once we get to uh, June 2nd and 3rd. There they are right there, all those earthquakes coming in uh, in sort of rapid fire succession. There's that 4.0. There's the 4.1, uh, a host of threes and twos as well. So maybe uh, one more time just for fun. So, no, we got to drag this back too. So here we are on June 1st, which would have been Saturday. Now we're rolling into Sunday, not a lot, and then Sunday evening, and then going into um, Monday when the eruption began. So there's our earthquake pattern uh, shown over time. And if we look at a little bit more of the data from the USGS, we can see the this is um, the depth of the earthquakes over the past month. This is uh, aggregating the whole month, um, but it goes up to the third. And then showing mostly those shallow earthquakes. And then location-wise, this is right in the summit region here 
of Kilauea. This is all longitude, so the further we go to the right, they're getting further off to the east, and if we go this way, it's getting more to the, the west. Usually they put a map in here that goes with that, but I didn't see that here this time. And then this graph is pretty telling as well. This is total earthquakes, uh, and, cum and earthquakes per day is the blue part. So each day over the past month, how many earthquakes per day? And we had a, a peak here in May, uh, early May, and then we had another peak here in sort of mid-May, and then things went back down to sort of background levels of less than 100 earthquakes per day, and then boom, you can see this big spike here at the end on June 3rd, second to third anyway, where we had over 400 earthquakes in a day, and then the, or the red line just shows cumulative earthquakes, so that's adding up all the earthquakes over this whole month time interval, so when you get a big spike like that, you see a, a a similar rise in the red line and then you can see it just go ballistic right here um, and this takes into account not just the cumulative number of earthquakes but the the size of the earthquakes too so how much energy they're releasing so a single magnitude 4 is going to send that red line up uh, a lot more than a bunch of you know magnitude 1s or 2s uh, same thing here looking at dates and earthquakes so you know lots of earthquakes but you can see clustering here and again early May mid-May and then this most recent uh, spat of earthquakes here including some of these huge circles here those magnitude fours so releasing much more energy over the last 24 or so hours there and of course that culminated in the eruption so uh, one more little thing there just found a, a single uh, news story on Big Island now one of the Hawaiian news stories um, using that same photo there. So a lot of preliminary information, not much to talk about yet. It'll be interesting to see uh, how this develops over the course of the day. I will pr try to provide an update later today when I do a live stream uh, where I'll be focusing uh, on not just Iceland, but we'll also spend some time looking at Kilauea and I'll try to pull together all the information I can at that time. That'll be later today at uh, 2 p.m in Mountain Daylight Time or that would be 8 p.m. UTC but there's an announcement uh, on my on the community tab on my on my YouTube channel so thanks for joining me thanks for supporting this and I hope this was helpful and gave you some insights into this uh, new eruption on the flank of Kilauea something we haven't seen in quite a while we've seen stuff in the crater we've seen stuff in the Lower East Rift Zone in 2018 uh, but we haven't seen much on the flank of Kilauea uh, for quite some time. So this is sort of a new chapter and a new phase. It'll be interesting to see how long this eruption persists. It may be short-lived, uh, maybe, you know, an indicator of, of the, a new pattern of eruptions that take place in a new area on the volcano. So we'll just have to wait and see. But thanks again for joining me and have a great day. Take care.